Rob, uh, obviously uh, you met with Scott about a year ago in his house for about eight hours. What happened between that time and now that brought us here? Well, you know, Brian, this, this is a, certainly a challenging day for us, um, uh, an unexpected day. You know, I think that um, when Scott and I first met a year ago, uh, we had some great dialogue, and we talked a lot about uh, basketball philosophy and basketball character and, and the things we look for in players. And quite honestly, that, that dialogue continued throughout the entire course of the season. Um, and so... You know, with the news we received from Scott um, um, yesterday, uh, obviously we were very surprised by it. Um, took us aback a little bit. And after talking with Scott and um, having more dialogue, you know, it became apparent that he came to this conclusion and um, felt like it was the right thing for, for him and his family to do. And um, so we reluctantly, you know, accepted his resignation. Not at all. Yeah, no, not not from my view, not from my seat. You know, I think, um, and I think I think Scott would echo this. I think you know we had really good dialogue throughout the course of the season, and good dialogue means a lot of different things. It means uh, agreements, disagreements, debates, arguments, uh, jokes, and we certainly had all of that. But that's that's what healthy organizations have in terms of communication, and uh, you know I really I really did feel like we had that. State, uh, your name and affiliation, please. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Rob, you, you said you were surprised yesterday. Was there anything leading up to yesterday? Maybe that would have given you a hint. Did, did Scott say anything before then? Was there any sort of, um, I don't know, a big debate maybe? That, that yeah, no, I don't, I don't think there was one uh, particular thing that stands out, Mike. I, I think that, again, uh, we had a lot, of, a lot of dialogue throughout the course of the season, as you can imagine. And um, lots of different things were discussed, but I, I can't recall one uh, one point in time that, that would indicate that. So he just called you guys yesterday and said, I'm resigning? He told us yesterday. Uh, John Denton, OrlandoMagic.com. Rob, did everybody seem to think that the season was a success? You made a 10-win improvement, that Scott had done a good job. Was he... Uh, frustrated with how the season went, do you think that that, that pain was still with him? Uh, that he couldn't reach this group was that was that some of it? Well, quite honestly, John, the pain is still with all of us. We wanted to make the playoffs and we didn't, and so uh, we have some work to do there. Now, at the same time, uh, we do feel like we made progress this year. I've said that, and I think Scott has said that. Um, and and I want to make clear, Scott Skiles did a heck of a job for us this year. Um, we improved in a lot of categories. Um, Scott brought uh, a really good structure, um, a discipline and accountability to our team that our team has not only benefit, benefited from in the short term, but I truly believe will benefit from even more long term. Um, and, and we believe in Scott Skiles. We believe in Scott and in his ability to coach. He's a heck of a coach. Christian. Christian Brewery, WFTV. Rob, you've talked about the process all along. How does this impact the process with such big decisions, free agency drafts coming up? Well, it certainly impacts it, right? It, it, you can't say it doesn't impact it. I think um, while this is a challenging day, I think we have to now look at it as an opportunity to, to find a, a new coach um, who, who fits our team and who can propel us forward. You know, we do have some big decisions to make um, relative to the draft and free agency. And you know, our philosophy all along is, is that we make decisions mutually, you know, and, and we collaborate and, and we discuss things as, a, as an entire staff. Um, and we'll continue to do that once we get the new coaching in place. What do you sell free agents on, though, when this will be the third coach? Yeah, I think, I think the, the sale pitch is pretty straightforward. Um, really good young core. We got means to improve the team. We have vehicles to improve the team with cap space and um, draft picks. Um, and we have a great city, great weather, no state tax, great ownership, um, and a first-class organization. So I, I feel confident that we have a compelling pitch to make. Rod, uh, Terrence Harris, Associated Press. Did, did he give you any indication why he was resigning? And also, what are you, how are you guys going to deal with the remaining years on his contract? 
So you, you'll have to ask Scott that. You know, we, we've had conversations, obviously. Um, I'm not going to sit here and, and disclose those specifics. You'll have to ask Scott about that. Um, relative to the contract, you know, uh, we don't disclose many details. I will tell you we do have a, a separation agreement um, in place, but um, I'm not going to give any more details than that. Mike. Uh, Rob, Mike Simon, Fox 35. But coaches, especially when there's only 30 jobs in the entire world of this, don't often leave on their own accord and don't often leave money on the table on their own accord. Did he give you any indication that he was that desperate to leave? And are you now feeling any type of desperation in terms of trying to right this ship? Well, I don't know if desperation is the right word, but I think there's certainly a sense of urgency to make sure we find a coach um, as soon as possible and, and make sure we find the right coach. Um, again, I think you'd have to ask Scott about the specifics you're um, inquiring about. I will tell you, over however months Scott and I worked together, close to 12, um, you know, Scott is very principled, and um, I respect that about him. He's honest, he's upfront, he's straightforward, and um, we're going to miss Scott Skiles. Rob, um, David Pingalore, uh, WKMG. Rob, uh, did Scott respect you, you think? You'd have to ask Scott that question. I would hope so, um, but you'd have to ask Scott. But do you feel that? I mean, I, asking him, but how do you, I mean, you, you had a relationship. Do you think that, in your mind, not asking Scott, do you think he respected you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Do you, did he, do you think that he liked the players that you had put in place, do you, or do you think that he, he couldn't win with this team? In his mind, your, your discussions over the last several weeks, whatever it was leading up to this, does he believe that the players that you put on this roster, he could win with? I didn't get the sense that he didn't believe in the players. Alana? Hi, Ileana Limon for Orlando Sentinel. I have a question from Josh Robbins, who isn't here today. He's in Chicago. So pass this along. What's he doing in Chicago? I don't know, but... He's not too happy to be there and not here. So a question on his behalf. Uh, a year ago, you said hiring Scott was entirely your decision. He wants to know, was his hire really your decision? And if it wasn't, was the GM coach relationship doomed to fail? It was my decision. 100% was my decision. Jamie. Do you, do you regret making this hire given what happened yesterday? I don't, no. I, we don't regret that. No, we, we believe in Scott. Um, Sometimes unforeseen circumstances happen in life, and there's only so many things that you can control, right, at the end of the day. Um, again, we look at this as a, as a challenging day. It was unexpected. It was um, surprising. And so uh, I think it's, it'd be hard to regret some, something you can't control. And are you concerned that perhaps an outsider's point of view of this team right now could be one of dysfunction? I, I don't think so, no. I think... Um, we're confident with the way we do things around here and, and how we run things and how we make decisions. Um, we're confident we'll continue to do that and continue to make good decisions. And um, it's on us now to, to start our coaching search and to, to find the next coach for, for our team. Go ahead, Mike. Rob, in, in Scott's statement, he said, um, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm not the right coach to coach this team. Um, what do you think he meant by that? And also, you said there was a separation agreement. Is he going to be paid any buyout money? Yeah, Mike, I'm, I'm not going to disclose the specifics on that. Um, we do have a separation agreement in place. Um, and, I, and relative to Scott's comment, I'm not quite sure uh, what he meant. I, again, I think that um, however Scott came to that conclusion um, is sort of his recipe. Um, but again, I do know that, that Scott is principled and um, you know, he thinks things through, and, and I'm sure he reflected on, on whatever he had to reflect on, and he and his family made the decision that, that he made. Normally when a coach would quit, though, you wouldn't give him money. It's his decision to quit, right? Define normally. Well, it doesn't normally happen when a coach quits. I don't know. I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure either, yeah. It probably is unusual, but, again, I think it speaks to Scott and – how principled he is, and um, you know he's an honest man. Zach Aldridge, News 13, piggybacking off of Jamie's question, what do you maybe tell potential coaches now who might be on the outside looking in and feel like something could be wrong here in Orlando and their desire to maybe not want to come here because of whatever inner workings happen for Skiles to want to leave? Yeah, I would, I would look at it opposite. 
I think we have a great situation here. Um, we got a great group of guys. We got a young team. We got guys who are willing to work. We got guys who want to be pushed, want to be coached. Um, and we think the, the future is really bright here. We really do. Um, you know, we won 10 more games than, than we won the season before. That, that's not an insignificant improvement. Um, our goal is to make the playoffs. Our goal is to make the playoffs immediately. Um, and that's what we're geared to do. Um, but I see our situation as, as being incredibly attractive. Hi, another one from Josh. Uh, will you be seeking a head coach who has NBA head coaching experience, or are you going to be open to anyone who hasn't had that level of experience? Not sure yet. We're just going to try to find the, the best guy for the team. Whatever that looks like, we're going to have to go through that process, obviously, and spend some time outlining that criteria. So not sure yet. Rob, is, is Scott free to negotiate with, with any team for this coming season? Again, Brian, not going to release specifics on that. And the, this may be simplistic given the what's happened, but isn't that Scott was not a, on board with the plan for however long it might take? That that a sense of maybe he wanted things speeded up? And uh, no, I, I didn't get that sense. I mean, look, we live in an, an impatient world, right? I mean, that's just the reality of um, the nature of us. But I do think that, that Scott was on board with the plan and the vision. Um, I do think he believed in the players. And I, I just think for whatever reason, he, he made the decision that he did. He's fine. He's healthy, correct? He's as, as far as I know, yeah. As far as I know, for sure. Christian Brewer, WFTV again. Evan Fournier tweeted out what the blank was. Any effort made to inform the players, or how did that go? Yeah, so we've spoken all the players. Um, I think there were two we left voicemails for. So um, again, it was surprising for all of us. It was surprising for um, for me, for for our staff, for our players. And it's it's one of those things where you know there's a visceral effect to a um, an occurrence like this. Philip Rossmanreich of Rolanda Magic Daily. Uh, you were in this position last year, looking for a coach. How much of the same criteria are are you going to be using as you look look? look for the coach in, in this market and how will the experience from last year, you know, having been GM for a little while, being a coach help you with your selection process this time around? Yeah, I think the, the criteria is, you know, we're still developing that, but I, I think the, the nuts and bolts are probably consistent. You know, we want someone who is going to continue to push us forward, you know, place a emphasis on the defensive end of the floor um, and figure out a way to uh, continue to develop our players. And as we continue to add pieces, um, you know, assemble a, a highly competitive team, which, quite honestly, we feel like we're we're not that far away from being competitive here for a long time. Mike Sinan again. Have you contacted any candidates yet? And is Frank Vogel one of them? Have not contacted anyone yet. No. Rob, uh, coaches have changed their minds in the past. Flip flop. You got a call yesterday, or or there was a meeting. Um, you were in Chicago. Did he? Did you talk to him today and maybe he changed his mind? Could he change his mind and you guys open up your back? Could that happen? I, I don't know. You know, I, we've, I feel like we've teased that out with Scott to make sure that the decision he has made um, is one that he has a lot of conviction in. And so, um, again, you can never say for certain what will or won't happen. Um, but as far as we know, he's resigned. But if he did change his mind, it's only been a day, made a mistake in his mind, would you want him back? We would take everything in stride. Uh, Paul Edwards, Aquarius 7 Broadcasting. I was wanting to know, what's the status of the ass assistant coaches? Are they still going to be with the team, or are they going out with Scott? Yeah, we're, we're going to obviously address that. That has not been addressed yet, um, but we'll address that immediately. I think we've sort of, uh, Josh Robbins' question again, sort of gone around this a little bit, but I wanted to make sure I asked it directly. Uh, where did the disconnect between you and Scott Skiles occur? If there was a specific disconnect on what the vision was, can you specify on, on where that came about? Yeah, I honestly don't think there was a disconnect. Again, um, you know, I'd be curious to hear Scott's take on that, but I, I think that throughout the course of the season, our, our dialogue was healthy, it was transparent. Um, and I thought it was consistent, so I, I don't. I think that's a mischaracterization. Kind of on on that on that last note, would any of the assistant coaches be considered as as potential candidates for the head coaching job? Should they be interested? And 
as far as moving forward, how important is kind of finding some stability after the last two two seasons, having some some instability at, at that coaching spot be for, for the franchise sure. moving well, forward? Well, the first portion of your question, the answer is yes. Um, the second part, the answer is yes. The stability is very important. And I think that's something that um, oftentimes has an intangible impact on a team. And so it certainly will be taken into account. Uh, Rob, you detect any uneasiness, any unhappiness in all your conversations with Scott throughout the year and at the end of the year that you're still surprised about this? That, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense that he was perfectly happy with everything. Well, Brian, how long have you been working in the NBA? Long time. Okay, so. Not 50. Would you say that it's typical or atypical for an NBA head coach to get frustrated at times? Scott is a competitor, and that's what we love about Scott Skiles. And so certainly throughout the course of the season, there would be times where he wasn't happy with things. There were times when I weren't happy with things. There were times where he was ecstatic about things. Same for me. So it's part of this, I think, typical cycle that um, it's sort of the, the law of the land in the NBA or probably any professional sport you know, throughout the course of a, of a long season. Following up with that, though, but to leave – years on a contract like that, it must have been really bad for him, you think? I think you got to ask Scott that question. Ping, I do. Any final questions? Scott, uh, Rob, you've been in the business a long time. Do you ever remember a coach just quitting with no other job? Off the top of my head, I can't remember. No, I can't remember that. 